Hey folks, the All-Star break, well, it's over. The Leafs are heating up for a stretch run. We're going to break it all down for you right here on the Ozone. You're in the offensive zone, your place for Leafs hockey. Hey folks, welcome to the Ozone. That's Coach, that's KD. I'm the Devo at uh, Ozone HQ. And we're here to talk all things Leafs with you. Listen, where are you at today, Coach? Hey guys, I'm uh, in the southern headquarters in Dallas, but hey, back from Nashville. You uh, loyal subscribers may recall I was in Nashville last time we did the pod. Kids were at a tournament. Well, hey, looky here. We won. Here's a picture of us with the banner. Nice. Good stuff. There's the old coach in the back. We got an arrow there. I'm blowing a bubble. Um, undefeated in that tournament. Uh, good stuff. And uh, it's great to see a team reach their potential in a playoff format, isn't it? <laughs> Fingers crossed, Coach. KD, uh, what's going on on the east side today? Hey, well, you know, I've never been better, Devo. Just, but just once, just once, I'd like to be better, though. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we, we, we agree. Listen, folks, before we get started, remember to hit subscribe. You'll never miss any content. Ring the bell, share, like the video. It drives the audience, and leave a comment. We'll get back to you. It helps uh, make us better. But listen, subscribe. We are going to be putting out a lot of content, fast and furious, especially the short videos. You don't want to miss them. So if you hit subscribe, they'll come into your feed. Okay, we had a nice 10-day break, guys, but uh, yeah. the Leafs are now back in business, not only uh, on, it, with the schedule, with a bunch of back-to-backs coming up, but uh, also some trade rumors. The trade deadline is only three weeks away. Kyle Dubas, come out, uh, he came out and talked to the media the other day. He dressed a number of items. KD, what stood out the most to you about uh, Dubas's recent comments? Yeah, I think, uh, I think, I hate to say it, folks here. I, to me, it sounds like he's he's going to be tinkering rather than splashing around. I think just the way he was talking, uh, it sounds like he's he's keeping the t- team uh, probably adding a few pieces here or there. Uh, you know, we, we bought, we've talked about, you know, Adding more and doing more, but uh, I, that's just the, the sense I got. Maybe it just maybe my pessis, pessimistic, uh, uh, leaf loading uh, way, but uh, I think he's I think he's tinkered. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly kind of intimated that way. Coach, what do you think? So two things stood out for me in that uh, press conference or thing he had. Um, one was they signed Connor Timmons, two years, yep. one point one. Um, I think that's great. I, I think he slots in right about where he needs to. You get that guy at that number, you can bury him in the minors, no problem, if need be. That's great. He's a good depth guy. He's no more than that, though, guys. You know. Um, uh, the second thing, though, is is uh, you know a little mixed message. I agree, Kev. He definitely shot down the idea, for sure, of any rental player or using any decent assets or prospects on a rental. But also, he poo-pooed any kind of big names, right? But at the same time, he also said, we don't want to add, really add, we're not looking to add to the bottom six. We're going to bring, we got bringing kids up. We want to see what we've got, and we're going to explore all possibilities. And he also said that he liked the D, and they hunkered down. We've been talking about this on the pod all the time, right? Lots of injuries, and everybody hunkered down. And, you know, what I thought was interesting there with the D is he mentioned six defensemen by name that that uh, in his thing. Jake Muzzin, and then five of the six that have been playing that he said have been doing a good job. The guy he didn't mention, Sandine. I think we're going to get in that in a little bit. Do you add that guy into a, into a deal or not? I don't know. I think he's being a little cagey, guys. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I, he, said, he said not very much by saying kind of nothing. Yeah. Coach, I, I agree with you. I, I, I don't know if it's a tactic, if it's a ploy. We'll, I guess we'll see in the coming days, weeks. Uh, he seems to be saying he won't be giving up any futures. Wow. I mean, 
There's no future for Dubis if they don't win this year. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, maybe he's also calming his team down, right? The, the, these guys have been playing on a winner. It's obviously a fun team to play. And when trade deadline comes around, a lot of guys start getting a little bit nervous. Um, you know, one area that Dubis said he isn't going to tinker with is goaltending. Uh, but as we discussed the last time, Matt Murray is hurt again. Again. Uh, sounds like he'll be back in two weeks. He's up moving around, which is good. This is a, seems like a, another injury to it. Completely different one from the other two times. Uh, that means we're going to see, uh, Joseph Wolf. Um, so let's start with you, coach. What are your expectations for him? So, um, I'm, I'm excited to see him, fellas. Uh, we've got, um, my expectations are he's going to play in two, of the next five games. Yep. There's two back-to-backs coming, and all five games are against teams that are not in the playoff picture. You can afford to play him. He's 14-1 and one as a Marley this year after coming back from his injury. You know, he's the, the MVP, goalie MVP of the AHL All-Star game. So I'm excited to see what we've got. Having said that, um, you know, I, I was looking for Dubas to give crack that thing open a bit on maybe Wall taking a, a bigger role. It's not going to happen. Um, Murray's going to come back. That'll be the tandem. However, we know both our guys are injury prone. They've both been out. They both miss, missed stretches this year. Murray twice. Samsonov was out for a while too, though, right? Yep. So Joe Wall getting in, getting a couple games, hopefully making some stops is good for us because he could be counted on. I mean, it's shaky. You know, Dubas, he said, the one thing definitive he said was, we're not looking to do anything with the goaltending position. Oh, so we're rolling the dice with these guys, fellas. Joe Wall, man, I hope he's a capable three. Yeah, listen, I I mean, we were were texting about Wall a few weeks ago, long before Murray got hurt. He's been on fire, folks, if you haven't been following, uh, uh, really standing on his head. As coach, you put, uh, you just mentioned he won the uh, the sort of the, the goalie of the tournament, I guess as you would yeah. call it, uh, at the All Star game. He'll be coming in to play with very, very high confidence. Uh, Keith even brought this up in an interview he did the other day, so he's interested to see him as well. Look, we talked about what kind of value it brings to an organization if you're able to draft, develop, and bring yeah. in a young goaltender to take some real minutes. It would be something if that could happen. KD, what are your thoughts on this wall, situ- wall, wall situation? Well, it's, it's really uh, a situation for next year, right? If he comes in and plays great, uh, unless there's a disaster, he's not really dressing. He might dress a couple times, maybe gets in and plays a little bit, but... You know, if everything goes the way everything should probably go, he's not playing in the playoffs. He's not really dressing much. Um, so I, I think if he comes and plays well, it makes him the guaranteed number three. I think Shalgren's already come in and played and done a bunch. So if he comes in and, and then struggles a bit, they might go and say, listen, he's going to be now buried in the AHL f- for the rest of the year. Hopefully he develops and we use him. We can look at him next year. And then if he doesn't do great, then, you know, probably the third string guy is Shalgren going forward. But, you know, I, I don't per- like, I don't, yeah, I my, my expectations. I hope he does great. I don't really care. You know, at the end of the day, the better he does, probably the better, but it's not going to create a goalie controversy. Hey, KD, that's especially pertinent because, you know, you know, Ilya is my man. (laughs) Um, But Ilya Samsov's only signed for one year. And the way his numbers are, he's getting a raise. And I I mean, I don't want to get my angst up again, but we can't afford anymore, right? There's the cap, there's no room. So we may need a guy who's got a little experience to step in. He maybe he's number two next year. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think I think that's that's what we're going to see. We're going to see how good he is now, and he's going to finish the end of the year in the AHL. Hopefully, he plays most of the games and plays great. And then there's also Shelgren in the background, and maybe you actually have a farm system with some goalies who can play. I mean, we haven't seen that for since Felix Potvin, I think. So yeah. maybe. Uh, Maybe your uh, your boy, uh, what's his name, went at West. But other than that, like this, this this is finally good to see some talent on the goaltending in the system. So that's good. A hundred percent. We talked about that last time too. Listen, another thing we talked about last time is areas that Dubas may look to actually upgrade if he did anything at the trade deadline. We mentioned things up front. 
We mentioned the back end. We've been talking about the back end for the last few years, actually. Um, <laughs> but uh, he seemed to Two downplay decades. going with. He seemed to downplay going with any big name, uh, and he was uh, uh, pretty emphatic that he wasn't uh, interested in rentals. KD, if you were Dubas, what would you do? Who, what, who, what would go out, and who would you yeah. target? Well, it, it's gonna for me. It's a top forty. Like, it, like there's no, there's no question. It's a top forty. Like, it's it's uh, you know I, I think the names we've thrown out there a bit. It's Chikorin, McCabe, Gavrigov uh, in that order, mainly because Gavrigov is a free agent, so that might negate uh, um, uh, right. uh, Dubas going after him. Uh, and that's that's cr- really what I do. Ideally, if you do that, you don't uh, you don't. You stack rather than replace. What I would rather see is a chicken come in and then move some futures to get him rather than having, let's say, a hull go out because you're, you're upgrading, but you're still not, you're not filling out as much. So, I mean, I think if, if you're going to move anyone, I would move Sandin or Timmons because I honestly think in a perfect scenario, those are the two odd men out and the two, they're the, your six and seven or seven and eight. So if we push everyone down, one of those comes out, but, um, you know, Hall is the free agent, so maybe he's the one who has to go. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I think he's also the battle-tested playoff warrior, the guy who could take the hitting, um, the guy who's great at killing the penalties. So you kind of you lose him. You all, you have a bigger hole. You have you've lost Muzzin. You've lost Hall. Yeah. Now you got to add him, and you really have to ensure that you get a top guy if you do move him. So I'm, I'd much rather stack rather than replace. I guess is is my point. Yeah, I, I, it, it makes some sense. The only issue is the cap uh, looming. Here. Probably yeah. if you're going to bring in a, if you're going to bring in a guy, it's going to take. You know, they're going to ask for futures. They're going to ask for prospects. But you're going to have to move some salary out. Coach, uh, is there any one, anything that's untouchable? I can't wait for this answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, uh, the um, uh, in The Athletic, James Myrtle had a good article on how much cap space there is and, and that kind of thing. Uh, I want to apologize to James Myrtle. He's been trying to get the old coach on his podcast for a while. I just, yeah. I, can't, I can't fit it in. I got the <laughs> Texas Tigers to coach, but... But uh, uh, maybe we'll have Myrtle on here. Uh, he he does make the point there is some cap space, but you're probably going to have to move some out. So who's untouchable? Well, uh, remember this time last year, Nylander was not untouchable, right? Right. Mm-hmm. I think he is now. Yeah. He's having a great year. He's definitely earning his money. Mm-hmm. You know, Tavares can't move. M- Martin and Matthews, Riley can't move that contract. Yeah. But uh, most – Everyone else is, okay? And, and by most everyone else, I say that includes the first-round pick. That includes, to me, Matthew Nyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great potential. Terrific. Um, if we, th- This is it, though, fellas. This is it. If you think you can beat Boston, nobody's untouchable, right? Yeah. Now, you may look at the last game before the break and say, well, we're not beating Boston, in which case you, maybe you don't do that. But... I think they're gettable. Kev, you looked at them. You think they're gettable. Um, we got to win a round, but we also, uh, you know, I think it's a coin toss, us in Boston. So why don't you go for it? Because they're going to. They're going for it. They're, they're going go to. For it. They've managed yeah. their cap better. They can do it. Yeah. So you got to go and try and do whatever you can. Fraser Minton is in. Nick sure. Robertson is for sure in there. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I, I do think, though, so that's that, to answer your question. Nobody really is untouchable. I do think they got to make a hockey trade. They can't just deal futures. First off, Chikrin costs more futures than the Leafs have. Right. Yeah. Two firsts and a good prospect. Two firsts. We got rid of all of our firsts. <laughs> right. We got and and our firsts aren't worth anything for the next few years. It's at the tail end of the first round. Right. Yep. So. Uh, you know, um, but uh, but I think that um, you got to put everything out there. I, I think Chikrin, I would, I have him way higher than all those other guys you have, Kev. Um, St. Louis is selling now with Tarasenko moving. Yeah, I course. love that guy Falk. Is there a way we can get him in? But anyway, I, I would I would move it. I, I think it, the roster needs a change, and I think we got to move move money out. Um, I'd move Sandine and I'd move Kerfoot to move stuff out. Yeah. 
Uh, good, great coach, a uh, great point coach, especially about St. Louis there. They have a bunch of big D that could help us out, uh, and all under term. Uh, so that might scratch uh, Dubas where he itches. But listen, we've been talking about trade options for some time. An interesting scenario that we actually discussed, a very similar scenario, uh, not too long ago in a chat. And then I saw this on Twitter the other day from uh, – Leaf Updates 21. Good follow on Twitter, folks, if you haven't uh, checked him out before. Anyways, he, this is it. This is it. He's got uh, us sending out Sandine, this year's first round pick, Kerfoot, and Ty Voigt to the Yotes for Shikrin and Busteg. Uh Firstly, I, I'll just comment on this real quick. I... I Kerfoot's got a 10-team list for no trade. There's no way Arizona isn't on it. Uh, so I think he would be tough, but there might be another kind of uh, depth forward that has some some cap space to move out. You might want to look at forty seven. You could probably move Engvall, and he's a uh, rental. So you would, you know, that's that's kind of what you get. But I think Zona would therefore want a little bit more uh, the other way. But in the vein of this conversation, I thought this was an even more interesting tweet, hot off the presses. From the editor in Leaf, yes, James Tanner's little operation there. This is his tweet, and I had to send it to co Coach as soon as I saw it. Get either Meyer, Larkin, or Shikrin, or get a new GM. <laughs> this is the guy who pretty much said that uh, Dubas was supposed to win every award for the last few years, as far as I'm concerned. So it leads me to believe that he's certainly all in on this team right now as is a lot of the fan base. But despite that, um, he's uh, he's pretty much putting it out there that if you don't, uh, if we don't win now, this GM's gonzo. Anyways, there Evo, you have it. Evo, Yo. can you imagine this guy doing that with three weeks left? Somebody better go do a health check on him, a wellness check, right? <laughs> Take away his shoelaces. <laughs> it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough twenty days for that guy. I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. All right, guys, listen, folks. Everything you need to know about the Leafs, you know where to go. Things are about to heat up in a hurry. We got a lot of content coming out. Make sure you hit subscribe. You don't want to miss anything. And as always, we'll be here to keep you covered right here on the Ozone.